how to create a very basic poster effect in Affinity version 3. Now Affinity 3 comes with a wonderful image trace feature and I'm going to show you how to use that in this video. So I've got this image and this image is quite complex and I want to simplify it. So before I start, I'm going to go over here and go to Pixel. Now I'm in the Pixel Studio here. I'm going to Pixel, Filters, Blur and Gaussian. Click there. Now you have to have this selected over here. If it's not selected, it will not work. So let's just go here, set the radius. I'm gonna go for something like 11. Just as you can see now, it's blurred. You don't wanna blur it too much, but enough. And click apply. Once we've done that, the next thing is apply an adjustment. I'm just gonna go over again over here to pixel and just down here to new adjustment layer. And then you can see you've got all these options. The one I want is threshold, just right down the bottom. So threshold, select that. And now you get this black and white image. Obviously you can tweak it if you want to go and put some colors in. Of course you can do all that sort of thing. But you can also modify the threshold. And now you see as I can change that, I'm gonna maybe go for something like that. So I've set it to about 68%. Obviously you can vary it up to you. But I'm going with that. And now go here to merge. I want to merge it. I don't want the adjustment particularly other than the actual adjustment result. So merge and now it's all become a single layer. What I can now do is I can use the new feature, the image trace. And you can find that over here in vector. So go to vector and down here to image trace. Real great addition to Affinity version 3. And I just so pleased they've added that. So image trace. Now it doesn't come with a huge amount of options, which is a pity, but it does come with edge threshold. So you can vary this, just tweak it, change it. I'm just gonna go for say 70%, 60%, doesn't particularly matter. Seems to be perfectly reasonable and curve fitting. You can just vary this. If you get a result that you're not happy with, just go and do it again. I'm just going to go with this, 62 and 63. Let's just try what it gets, see what it gets. So click apply. And now you've got this. Doesn't look very different, but it is now a vector design. So go over here, click there, and you can see you've got these curves. Instead of a pixel layer, you've got these curves. And you can manipulate these curves. You can, of course, go through all these. You can go here in the layers. You can see you've got lots of ones. You've got you've got a fair amount of like little curves so if i click on one let's just click on one and you can see as i click on that you can see it's in some cases very tiny you might want to clear this up you might clean it up but what i want is this bit here this white bit here and that's the big chunks of color here and you can see here obviously in this case white so just click on the curve here and you can see then with the move tool here you've got the curve up here just click on there and now I can set it to red. Now, of course, I can select these individual ones. So if I want, I can select that, maybe click there, and again, set it to red, and so on. You can see I could, or I could just leave it. It doesn't particularly matter. I could select them from here as well. But also what I can do, say I want this curve here, this one, and let's go here, it's black. You can see here, predominantly black. Let's just change it, click there, maybe go full green. Or maybe go for something like that. You can vary it. Just try out different combinations. Select multiple pieces as well. So you might decide, you know what? I don't want that. Let's just undo. So let's just undo that. So you can go back. Go to back there. And maybe select different parts. So hold down the shift and select other parts of it. And then just change the colours there. Again, you've got option. Now you'll notice here you've got no colour. However, what you can do, you go down here to the shapes, you can click here and then set the color there. You can see just by doing that, just change it, maybe go for something like that. There's a whole range of different things you can do with this. Maybe go and change this part. You can see that's selected now. Just click there and go for a green and so on. Maybe change the eye color. So just select that one, go here, move tool, select that part and just click there and maybe go for, say, blue or whatever. I'm gonna go with black still. So we've got this design. Obviously you can vary it 
all number of different colors are possible. But also what you can do is you can select this. So let's just go going down here to the eye and there's the eye there. Just select this one, the curve. If you can't select it here, just go over here, just select here. And you can always resize it, maybe move it around, do a whole range of different things. You can see obviously there the slight glint there is moved there. But you could vary it positions. You don't have to keep it or maybe select this and maybe shift this away. This creates an abstract sort of design very quickly like that. Or maybe move that down like that whole range of them, maybe put a slightly different background because you can always add to it as well. You can always then go to the rectangle tool. Here's the rectangle tool and then click and add and you've got there and you can see the rectangle there and change the color of that. So if you want a different color there and so on. So there's literally thousands of things you can do to create weird and wonderful posters effects. And of course, then all you need to do is just go over here. You've got your artistic text tool simply add some text to the image as well. It's a vector design. It can be now any size. Another great thing, you could just save it. Just save it to your assets or of course go to file and then save as. Just save it as format file. Now Studio has got its own format file so you can save it in that as well. So that is a quick way of creating a very, very basic vector poster. It's a poster that you can then use obviously in other work as well. Now you can do exactly the same with a more complex picture as well. So I've got this image, but let's just go back to the original. Let's just go back all the way. So there's the original. You could, if you want, just create a basic vector and image trace. But I think probably the best thing about this is that you can, of course, reduce it down using that threshold to blur in to create something slightly easier to work with. So I've just applied the vector here, turned it image trace, absolutely brilliant, absolutely wonderful. But let's just see when you expand this out, you've got a lot of lots and lots and lots of curves, makes it a lot harder. Work. Obviously you can still select the sort of big chunks of curves here. You can just change here. Let's just click there and just change the face, maybe make a red and so on. But it's a lot easier once you've done maybe a blur and threshold effect just to reduce it down and work with a far cleaner sort of curve design. And of course you can manipulate this further as well. But that is a quick run through of how to create a very basic poster effect in Affinity. Affinity version three, that's the key thing. Affinity Photo 2, Affinity Designer 2, didn't have image trace, but now the new Affinity version 3 does have that. Great new feature and worth checking out. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions or thoughts, please let me know in the comments. Are you happy with the new version of Affinity? Do you find it really good? I think it's got some great features. And over the next few weeks, months, I'll be exploring more of them and putting out videos and tutorials about the features that I find. And I think there's some really great ones coming up. Bye.